All right, so thank you for being here. Uh, today we have a uh, new guest, is Alexander Marquez. Yes, he's, he's an English teacher. And I would like to like uh, ask you a little more about you. Uh, how did you get into the, into the teaching field and how long have you been teaching? Teaching has been one of the kind of characteristics that I think was like born with me. Because since I was little, I decided that I wanted to be a teacher. Don't know what kind of subject I would just choose from. At the beginning, I thought that I would just start with with history or social studies. Whatever crossed my mind, that English will be it, though. But I, I was pretty much into into teaching. Right. And then I made up my mind about that the English was going to be it. And it was. And I've been, I've been working in that, nothing else, for about 20 years. All right, that's been a long time, Robert. Right? Sure. You're um, gonna... <laughs> yeah, I would like to ask you why teaching. Yeah, do you mention that you were like really into teaching? You didn't uh, like have the the subject already, but you know you knew that you were about to teach. How? Oh, it, there was something right there deep down that wanted me to to share with other people the knowledge that I have acquired previously. In fact, uh, I play tennis, I play volleyball, and I'm always on this kind of willingness to teach everything that, you, that I've learned. This is what I yeah. mostly like to do, to teach, to correct. Sometimes they, they, they tag me as a, as a really hard, I'm really hard on that, correcting every single mistake. <laughs> Yeah, like a perfectionist. That also reminds me regarding the, that phrase that says, uh, you never stop learning. Yes, even when you are teaching, you are learning. Yeah, and I'm sure that you have learned a lot in your, from your students as you as the time that you have been teaching, right? Sure, you can say that again. I've learned from them. I have, there, there, there comes a time when you get them involved in the process. I was just saying a little bit before the, the interview. You get them involved in the process. You need to get to know the the students too, what they their what their needs are, what their likes and dislikes are. Yeah, in order, also that... in, order to, in, in order to narrow narrow and categorize what exactly you're gonna be teaching the next day, you yeah, know, like, or the next the next term. Like, like the best dynamic of teaching is to personalize or to make important and relevant what the teaching is for the student. I get that. I really get that. All right. Uh, now I would like to ask you how. How can you tell us regarding the, the dynamics that you use that you use uh, in order to make the students to participate? Yeah, to involve him as we were talking about. Well, the first thing I need to start with a question that is challenging. Yeah. That question, oh, yeah. that question really needs to make them think and want to participate by themselves. Sometimes there's a little debate in the class about that question you need to start with that question if you don't start with that question they would they won't even be willing to participate they gotta be something that it's really relevant to their you know teenagers lives yeah exactly i really get that when you're like proposing a problematic theme yeah like a problematic question or theme that may be like arguable for every student so yeah that's perfect and how do you develop how it, all right, so you start with a well, like with a problem, yeah, with a question, and how can you develop that into the class? It depends on the different class, team, or house. Basically, basically, you've got to write down the question on the board or just like tell the question. Example today is started with animal testing. What's your opinion about animal testing for makeup or other products? And they, um, I gave them one or two minutes so they can talk about the topic, what they know about the topic to the partners. They can share with one or two partners the same thing. So I made them change. So one minute, talk to a partner about how, how much you know about, about the topic, about animal testing. And then they go to another one, talk to another student, one minute. And then talk to another student, one minute. And after that, we just make a whole class. And we talk about what yeah. the knowledge, what was discussed. And you can be amazed of what they know, what they have heard, what they have listened, what they have to add up 
to the class itself to enrich it without even knowing. That's that's the way participation just takes place by itself. Yeah, that also makes me think, uh, and I would like to ask you how how this development of the class affects your rapport with your with your students. Well, I, um, at school, it's it's the school that I'm working with. It's really easy to get to have this rapport with the students. Because the, the first thing you do once you're just um, going to start a class, you're just at the door, uh, at the door doorway, yeah. and, you, and you greet them. You say, hello, how was your day? Um, uh, how was your morning? Did you sleep well? And, and that, in that way, when you're just like having this kind of relationship with them, they know that you are interested in them. Most, mo more than teaching them English, and once they get into the classroom, you greet them in English, saying, hello, what's up, how was your day, do you sleep well, did you sleep 10 hours, do you sleep 2 hours, and so on, the the learning process starts from there. And and that makes them think that I am their, 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 their friend, and somebody who wants them to improve, to, to boost up their language and their, their vocabulary. And so on, when it comes about asking a question, like I said before, about this uh, challenging question, they start up expressing themselves and saying whether they oppose or they're against and speaking up their minds freely without the, the prejudice of being judged or misjudged. That's it. All right. Yeah, I perfectly get it, Alexander. Thank you so much for sharing this experience. Now I would like to ask you, have you already tried any like project, complete project in your classes? My my career has been full of a lot of projects that I could talk to you about. I have completed a lot of them, like plays and and based on on clear methodology, in which there are a lot right. of projects out of chemistry, um, history, social social studies and sports, a lot of projects that I have developed with all of them in the class. Uh, right now I'm working with, I already finished one food testing project that I just realized that it's it's made in, in Vancouver and in Toronto. So I decided like I want to do this food test with them and I was amazed by their creativity and their originality as well developing their own products, their own food, thinking about being a maker, being entrepreneurs. And that food testing project was really amazing. I'm still I'm still working with another another great ninth graders, working with them with the food testing, perfectioning and developing better strategies just to have better outcomes with all of them. And it's been a great project, the food testing. Uh, we have we have uh, every year we have plays from a very f uh, famous uh, literature book from from Shakespeare or from other from other writers, and then those plays are, are really good because they also work on on the acting and the singing together. Also, another project about sports, playing sport with them specific specifically tennis and volleyball, and also with music. I involve the music teacher in my classes, That's so good. so they can learn pronunciation while while they move their body with the kinesthetic, and also they have the chance to to sing. If they like to sing, they sing, and they move their bodies as well. Yeah, yeah, I perfectly understand that, and yeah, I personally think that those projects that involve not only English but as you mentioned, clear like brings another subject and use the English not as a theme or as a subject to develop in the class, but as a tool to get the different themes are, uh, are a really good idea, are a really good methodology to develop the English by itself, right? Now, uh, I would like to ask you what, what exactly motivates you to carry out these kinds of projects, especially those ones that involves a different subject? Since since teenagers specifically, they get bored easily and fast. <laughs> we have to come up with different kind of activities that can really motivate them a lot. As I said before, when they have fun and they do something different, they, they like doing different things. 
learning different different kind of topics, subjects related to their lives, and you can be amazed at what they know. And that's what really motivates me to get them different things. Besides, uh, there are basic things, basic concepts that must be taught. Yeah. That yeah, they yeah. cannot skip. That they cannot skip. But having fun, it's one part of the process. Doing different things, you uh, involving technology and apps also in the... Um, in the learning process where they can use their devices, their cell phones or the iPads. It's, it's, it's amazing. They see the variety that the, the teacher has in their classes. They're only focusing on grammar or on reading. We have to work on the on the skills, on the receptive and productive skills. But at the same time you need to you need to add to to the class as much as you can. So they can have a variety of things and lots of lots of experiences to discover English because it's about being immersed in the language itself. Yeah. On one hand, we always have what motivates us in front of a class. Whenever we are in front of a class, we need motivation. But sometimes, and just a few sometimes, I hope, uh, just uh, there are some things that just demotivate us. So I would like to ask you, what have you noticed that is the biggest barrier to carrying out projects in classrooms? The biggest barrier? Yeah. Well, I don't see it because they're they're teenager. Maybe they're like I said. Like I said, they they're they're just teenagers. We know we are working with people that that need to be encouraged, and we have to do things over and over again until they start seeing their results. They're not willing to work to work with us at first. At the beginning, they might be a little reluctant. But yeah, as, exactly. as time goes by, uh, the, for example, the my, my foot my foot testing project, they knew it was different. They didn't want to do it at first, but later when they saw the results and when they received the the reviews, the written reviews from their classmates and the final product, they were oh, can we do this over again? Yeah, and they wanted to yeah. do it again, but that's. Do you know that you're always going to find teenagers that don't want to do anything, teenagers that don't want to do, want to follow you. But yeah, so, they, so they, they, they don't see the light right ahead in the tunnel at all. Exactly. So an obstacle can, can be like the attitude or the willingness to learn by the students by itself. Yeah, and it always has been an, an issue. And yeah, that basically is something that we like cannot really do something about if you are if they are not willing to. Yeah, but we can try. Because, yeah, you got a point there. Uh, obviously, they're gonna be challenged, and once you are, you know that you're gonna be challenged, then you don't want to do anything at all. So, oops, that that could be difficult. Much and encouragement, those words that we just say over and over again until they really believe that they will be eventually able to get it done on their own. In these cases, when basically there are some students that are not willing to go ahead with the with the project or with the class at all, uh, do you have any strategy, something to say, or do you implement something that can like make them work? Um, leadership. There are some students that are leaders, so uh, we have to select the groups strategically. Yeah. So they. In, in each group could be a leader that will will like ensure that activity will be carried out. Even even if at the beginning some other student will not follow, they will eventually. But there's there must be a leader in the group that could really carry them out. You don't you don't expect that everybody's gonna follow your 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 lead that that simply. You will have one or two drawbacks, but that's pretty normal. But make make sure that in each group. Let's say we have four groups. In each group, you have your the four best students in each group. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Like, realize the responsibility by the students themselves. themselves. So, yeah, I, I really think that that will be good enough to, to make them work. So, uh, this is something uh, I would like to ask you. And how can you notice at the end of the project that it was successful uh, by assessment or something like tells you that, yeah, what the project that I did was good enough to make them learn. Yeah, um, I remember precisely in, in 
I would like to point out the the music project. It, it was it was really nice. By the end of the class, students were still singing the song <laughs> on their own, and they were still singing it over and over again. It was okay. That was a success because they're they're still they're still singing it. And in the food project, you could see the the we took the pictures and we post them on the wall, and and also the 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 reviews they received about the product and you could see you you, you, you could see when the light activity there there's smiles you need to pay attention to the body language that's that tells you like if you can go on with the activity or you have definitely have to think about something else yeah i didn't think about it yeah that's really good to have someone to a lot of experience here because like you are giving us certain like perspectives that we didn't notice that we haven't think it about also, uh, as we said in Spanish, lo que bien se aprende nunca se olvida. Y, yeah, basically that's true. That's so true. Now, uh, regarding the integration of projects, two different projects in the same one, like converting. I guess that you have already done it with Clil. How has been the experience, uh, like uh, the, the experience that sharing with a different subject, also a different professor, these kinds of projects? Mm. The, this kind of project when they are integrated they they're it, it's a lot of fun and keep this in mind they could do any kind of projects in other in other area let's say science biology whatever and what they got to do is like change the commands change the language into english um i do remember once they they took a picture for it was for i think it was for social study they took a picture and they and they zoom it zoom, zoom in the picture they printed it and they made like a poster and they said they in front of the of the of the, of the class uh, they described analyzed and said their perspective in spanish about the picture they took they just had their devices and went outside into the picture and did this and what they have to basically do with English is like do the same, but in English, simple. The with different yeah, language, make, with, with different language. It's a, it's a project was a project from social study, but they did it in French and in English. The same, the same yeah. project. It was, it was, it was, it was really easy project. But it's a way to integrate all the subjects in one in, in one project that that really worked out for the team. They already knew they already knew what they were gonna say but in different commands, different language. Yeah that's so good. Now uh, regarding the tasks that you use or that you implement in your project, does any any task have the feedback or the assessment? And how do you make the feedback to the students? How do you make the students know that they did a really good job without uh uh, like with or how can you tell them more or less that they did uh, something that was not properly done without hurting them? Um, recently, I have been preparing them for IELTS IELTS speaking task, and after it is done, the first question is, "How did you feel? How do you think you did?" And then they start talking. They have to start giving feedback to themselves. And then I need to start first with a positive, positive, positive feedback. Always positive feedback. And Absolutely. you need you need to ask them straightforward. What did you do well? And after they answer, okay, I did this and this and this well. So very good. And I also add up more things that they that they did well. And in the end. I just show them that I wrote I wrote down some of the things they need to be improved because basically there are some things that need to be improved. Yeah. But they need to tell I basically I just tell them to let me know what they did right and what they did wrong. And that that's that's a good way to to receive to receive feedback from themselves. And in the end I just confirm what they told me. Yeah. You did. You didn't use the final S. You didn't use um, the 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 very good competitive. So you have to work in this competitive and things like this. There's that, a way to give feedback on the general topic, not not to example. I tell you, you need to work on 
the simple present, period. I don't need to say, tell them exactly what they need to work on. Okay. Thank you so much, Alexander. We really appreciate you, like you came here, that you are willing to share your experience. Uh, you can see the result of the, this interview. We have reached to our end. So you can look for this interview and more content in ELTpedia, yeah, ELTpedia.com. And we'll be like, uh, we'll let you know what else you can help us with. We really appreciate your commitment and thank you so much. You're welcome, so do I, and thanks a lot for having me. Have a great day. It's a pleasure. Take care.